everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new tutorial. And today I'm featuring Simon Says Stamps new Believe in You collection, which has some great new stamps, dyes, stencils, and so much more. However, I'm going to be using one of the new dies, one of the new stencils, and I also use some of the embellishments and stamps that are in the release too. But the main focus of the card is going to be this new faceted striped stencil and the carnation frame die. This technique that I'm using today to create this card is what I'm calling ghost blending. Ghost blending is a way to be able to have a more subtle background so that way when you have a more delicate die like this carnation frame, the background isn't distracting from the rest of the card but rather complements it. And because I did some strategic die cutting, I was able to continue the pattern into the die cut itself. Let's get started on the card. To begin, I took a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm going to do some ink blending inside of my Make Art Station. The Make Art Station is a great, easy, clean, slick surface that's great for ink blending. For the ink blending, I'm using Distress Oxide inks. I have some Dusty Concord and also Chip Sapphire. They're the only two colors I used on this card. I applied both colors onto this Bristol paper using a blending brush. You don't have to use a particular brand of blending brushes, any will work for this technique. And I'm just going to basically create a very light application of ink onto the cardstock. I don't want this to be heavy, I want this to be extremely light, so I'm using very light pressure as I apply the ink. I'm also making sure to overlap as best as possible so that I can get a third color as these two ink colors meet in the middle. After I've done some ink blending and added a little bit of color on here, I will then bring in the new stencil. The faceted striped stencil is very delicate, so I'm going to use some pixie spray to help hold the stencil down as I do some more ink blending. So outside I sprayed this so that way I didn't have the aerosols in the house, and I'll attach this down onto the card. The tack of the adhesive is quite light, so it's not going to ruin any of your other ink blending. I'll put some more magnets back down onto my paper and bring in an ink blending tool. These Tim Holtz ink blending tools really saturate the paper with ink. So this is perfect for doing some additional blending on top to create a bit of contrast between the blending I already did onto the paper. I'm using both colors, the Dusty Concord and Chip Sapphire once again. And you'll notice that the heavy blending is really creating a beautiful saturation of color. And again, as I meet in the middle, I'm going to blend both colors back and forth to create a third color, which really helps the transition. Now that my ink blending is finished, I'll take the magnets off and remove the stencil. As I remove the stencil, you'll see how there is a very subtle pattern in this paper. Because it's not the bright white of the paper, this is actually quite subtle. Had I used white, it would have been much more stark and it would have distracted from the carnation frame that we're going to be die cutting this paper from. I used a little bit of water splatters to help with that softening. And once the paper was dry, I brought in that carnation frame die. I'm going to die cut that carnation frame from the center of this panel. Once it's been die cut, I'll remove it from the die and save just the positive portion of this die cut. I'm not gonna be using any of the negative pieces. We just want the frame and the flowers. And honestly, we just need the flower itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this frame that I've die cut here, and I'm going to use my fussy cut scissors to detach the flowers from the frame. Because I'm creating this continuation of the design from the background into the flowers itself, it needs a little bit of separation so that this does not get lost. So by detaching the flower, I can attach this now onto another colored frame. And in this case, I'm gonna use white because I feel like the white will be a really nice contrast and help the flowers really stand out. So I die cut that carnation frame three more times, this time from some white cardstock. And I'll use some liquid adhesive just to apply some adhesive onto this die cut and stack all three together for a more dimensional element. That's because I really want this to stand out off of the card, but I also wanna pop this up. So not only will there be the help of the thickness to help give it a little bit more relief off of the card, but the thickness is also going to help this stand up with the foam tape. Finally, I took that little purple 
flower that I cut out of the frame and attached that onto the stack of white frames. So this is three layers of white frames and then finally the purple layer. And I can move on to building the rest of the card at this point. So onto the frame that was left over from die cutting that carnation frame. This is the larger portion. I pop that up off of an ivory white cardstock card base. Then I will take some very thin strips of foam tape and add those onto the back of that carnation frame. And as you can see, just from that little sampling of how this is going to look once this is put in here, you can see that this is going to really have some nice separation from the background yet it still continues the pattern and the color scheme throughout the card. So this continuation really helps the whole card design stand together. And if you didn't want to deal with the foam tape, you could have totally skipped that and just adhered that flower frame onto the card itself. Okay, so now I'm adding some embellishments. These are some of the new lilac sequins from Simon Says Stamp, and I glued those down onto the card with some clear adhesive. Finally, I added a sentiment onto my card using the new thanks and encouragement stamp set and I die cut that green from the coordinating dies. There's that nice empty space inside the frame which is perfect for popping up that sentiment. So I used a couple pieces of foam tape to attach that down in there. And that really finished off the card nicely. But what I really love is the soft and subtle design of that background where it continues into the flower and you have that beautiful continuation throughout the entire card. Yet because we did that ghosting, that helps the background stay in the distance versus taking center stage over top of that carnation frame. Because that carnation frame is so delicate, we don't want it to get lost. I hope that this video has inspired you to create with this new Believe in You collection from Simon Says Stamp. I have links to the collection in my video description if you're watching on YouTube or I have the entire collection linked over at my blog. Thanks for tuning in. I will be back again very soon with more to share. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.